When I think about the future of digital photography, it looks a lot like what Adobe's doing with their Lightroom cloud-based ecosystem, where you've got Lightroom on the desktop, on the phone, on the tablet, you upload your photos, they all sync between devices, including the edits, and you can share with anyone from any device. It's all gonna be the same. And I know a lot of people are really interested in that ecosystem, especially being able to edit their photos on their iPhone and then share them with people either through text messaging or on social media. The problem is that I'll be the first to admit that, especially if you're new to Lightroom on the iPhone or even on Android, it can be very overwhelming. Fortunately, Adobe is trying to do something about that. And I noticed this on their last update with Lightroom. So let me show you what I mean right here. I've got my iPhone 14 Pro Max here, and I'm gonna open up the App Store. And here, this is the app listing for Lightroom. Now, you can see that two weeks ago, version 8.4.1 was released, and the first bullet point says, early access, enable in your app settings to try the new editor. Now, this is actually a pretty big deal to me. I'm gonna show you in a second what this looks like. So I kind of wish they were a little bit more descriptive, but so be it, I'm gonna show you what it means. All right, so imagine you're, this is your first time in Lightroom. You just loaded it and you are in this edit view and you tap up here and there are these different views. You're not exactly sure what they do, but it's taking up space on your screen. And then more importantly, along the bottom here, you have, I believe, 13 different icons. And if you click on an icon, some of these have different sliders, some of them have buttons. It's just a lot. Like, I'll be the first to admit, it's a lot for someone who's not familiar with this. That's why I'm really excited about this new editor. So you wanna make sure you're running the latest version of Lightroom on your iPhone. And then what you're gonna do is tap on this top right button here and then go to app settings. From here, you'll wanna tap on early access. Now, if you have an older version of Lightroom installed on your phone, it might say technology previews, if I remember correctly. That means you're not running the latest version, so be sure to update it first. So again, tap on early access, and what you're gonna to wanna to do is enable the new editor. Now, you'll see this send feedback button here. This is important. I actually hope people use this, especially when they're using these experimental features, especially with things like generative fill in Photoshop beta you have the ability to give Adobe signals as to whether things are good or bad. So with this send feedback button, uh, you can, after you have an opportunity to use the new interface, you can tell Adobe whether you think it's good. Okay, so with that done, when you close out of this screen, you'll see here the cool little confetti that falls and this uh, display box. Now this has a lot of important information in it, so don't skip over it. Although if you do, if you're kind of like me and you're like, ah, whatever, I'm just gonna tap on got it, you can get back to it by tapping on the early access badge on the top right here. So a few things I wanna point out, obviously a simplified toolbar, but more importantly uh, are the next two. The second one is that you can enable profiles and optics, and I'll show you that um, in a second, but by default, profiles and optics, which are important, those are hidden. Uh, and then you also have geometry is under crop. That's also important. And I also showed you how you can switch between the different views. Remember the edit and the ratings. Originally, we had to tap on that drop down menu. Now it's hidden under the ellipse menu. So I'll show you all of this right now. All right. So first, you can see right now a much cleaner interface. The top left drop down that was up here, that's gone. Um, and the, the whole row of icons is now consolidated. So Adobe says that they kind of surfaced the five most important uh, tools that a photographer would wanna use in kind of the order that you would wanna use them. I don't necessarily agree, but that's fine. You have here these uh, five buttons. The first are your presets, obviously. Then you've also got the ability to crop. And like they mentioned, the geometry controls are here as well. Here is where you'll find your edit controls. And when you tap on it, unlike before where you were greeted with you know, 13 different icons, here you've only got five. It's a lot more manageable. When you tap on any of these, you'll get the same sliders and controls that you had before, but it's just a lot easier to, to navigate. Next to edit, you've got your masking controls, which are some of the most powerful I've ever seen. The fact that you can do these kind of adaptive intelligent masks on a mobile device is just mind boggling to me. And then you've got, the healing tools here. So you've got the newer remove tool, the heal brush and the clone stamp tool. So 
there you go there. Now remember that there are still some tools that are important that are missing. If you tap on edit over here, you'll see again, we just have auto light color effects and detail, but we're missing profiles and optics, which to me are important. If you wanna get those, all you have to do is tap on the top right over here, go to view options, and then this second toggle, always show profiles and optics, you'll wanna enable that. Now you'll see under edit here, again, just open up, on the right now, we have two additional tools, optics and profiles. Optics is important because if you wanna enable lens correction profiles, you can do that there. And then of course, profiles, these are fantastic. You can use the ones that come with Lightroom or you can import ones that you've purchased from say, my website. Um, but then all you need to do is tap on one. And the great thing about profiles is that they apply on top of any edits you make. So as opposed to presets, which apply to the edit sliders, the profiles apply on top of them. But if you don't wanna use any of them, no worries there. And so with this simplified layout for your editing tools, it's actually pretty easy to bust through an edit. Like I start by going to the crop tool here and I'm gonna click on the pencil tool to get to the manual geometry controls. And I wanna make sure that these vertical lines on the bridge are straight. So I'll swipe up, I'll go to vertical and I'm gonna drag to the right until the vertical lines are more or less like really straight up and down. So that looks good here and I can swipe down. Actually, what I wanna make sure of is that I have uh, constrained crop enabled because that'll crop in from the adjustment to the composition. Then I'll click on done. Okay, so here we've got the crop done and you can see that if I just tap and hold how we straighten the image up. And that's important. You wanna make sure that the geometry and the crop is correct first. Then I'll go to edit over here, click on color and get a custom white balance by clicking on this dropper here and putting it over a neutral gray area. Fortunately, there wasn't much of a color cast there, so we're good to go. And then if I want, I can just tap on auto I mean, that does a really nice job just right off the bat. If I tap and hold here, and that's another thing that you may not know. If you tap and hold on the image, it'll show you the original and then what you've done so far. I can then go back to edit over here, go to effects, add a little bit of a dehaze and a little bit of clarity, hop over to detail to apply a little bit of sharpening here. So with sharpening, I like to zoom into an area that is supposed to have detail. I'll tap and hold on the sharpening amount slider. While I'm doing that, I'll tap with my other finger to convert it into a grayscale image, which makes it easier to see the, the sharpening effect. I'll then zoom out over here and with the masking slider, I'll do the exact same thing. I'll start dragging with the masking slider and then with my other finger, I'll tap and hold and that gives me an actual mask view. And so I basically want sharpening applied just to the outlines over here. That looks good. Last thing to do is jump over to effects again, go to the post crop vignette. Let's add a nice little vignette towards the midpoint, add a bit of a feather. Now there's a little bit of too much contrast for me. So I'm gonna go to the shadows slider under light, open those up a little bit more and we're good to go. Again, if we tap and hold, there's our original photo. That was our super quick edit. Now there is one more thing that I need to show you. Remember. Uh, on the top over here, there was a drop down menu to change views. You can get to those if you tap on the ellipse icon over here. And then you have this option called info and ratings. And here you have all of the information that you need. You can apply the different uh, star ratings as well as select the pick or reject flags. You have all the information about the file that you're working on as well as any metadata. So if you do add a title or captions or even keywords, you'll have them over here. And I like that because it's kind of now out of the way. It's not something I access very often, not nearly as often as the editing tools. So when you're done and you want to return to that, just tap on the arrow on the top left over here and you'll be brought to the editing view. And again, as a reminder, if you want to tell Adobe what you think of this new editor, just tap on the early access badge and then you have that send feedback button there. But if you want to return back to the, I guess, original editing view, all you need to do is go back to the ellipse icon here, go to app settings, go to early access, and then disable the new editor. You'll still have all of your edits here, except you will now have all of your tools along the bottom here, and you can change your view using this dropdown over here. 
It really is great to see Adobe trying to make Lightroom more accessible and less overwhelming, especially for newer users or users who want to try the app on different platforms. Speaking of which, if you do want to learn everything there is to know about Lightroom's cloud-based ecosystem using Lightroom on your desktop, your phone, or your tablet, I would love it if you checked out my newest course that I'm currently actively working on. It's called Lightroom Everywhere. You can click on the link below and save some money by pre-ordering it. It'll be ready very soon. Your purchase directly helps my small business and I really appreciate it. And basically this will cover everything you'd wanna know about using the cloud-based ecosystem with your photos between Lightroom on your desktop, your phone, and your tablet. If you wanna learn more photo editing tips, I've got this video right here. And of course, if you like this video, a thumbs up always helps. And be sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of all new videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.